Kerry Mullis, inventor of PCR was born on the 28th of December 1944 in North Carolina. His parents grew up in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and they live near their grandfather's farm. Kerry Mullis was still an eight-year-old boy when Watson and Crick published The Structure of DNA in 1953. By the time Watson and Crick were awarded the Nobel Prize, he was still busy designing rockets in Georgia Institute of Technology. He was not interested in studying DNA at all. By the time he left Georgia Tech, biologists had already solved the genetic code. Carey only began to show interest in DNA during his six years as a PhD student at UC Berkeley. After getting PhD, he headed to Kansas to become a writer. There, he quickly found out he was too young to be a writer and was poor in plotting. So, there was only one option. Becoming a scientist. He started working as a scientist and worked for two years and later returned to Berkeley. On his return, Cetus Corp. A biotechnology firm hired him. At Cetus, he worked on DNA. One Friday night, he was driving from Berkeley to Mendocino with his girlfriend. His girlfriend was sleeping while he was driving. It was during this drive that the idea of PCR came to him. An idea that would revolutionize the field of molecular biology. Out of excitement, he stopped his car at mile marker 46.7 on Highway 128. He realized that with two oligonucleotides, DNA polymerase, and four nucleoside triphosphates, he could make as much DNA as he wants. However, he could not believe himself at first. He said to himself, it had to be an illusion. Otherwise, it would change the DNA chemistry forever. It would make me famous. It was too easy. Somebody must have done it. So Carey went to the library after his return from the drive to check any literature about this idea. To his utter disbelief, there was no single literature about amplifying DNA using primers. He was astonished. So, Carey shared his idea with his friend and colleagues in the firm, but nobody seems to get excited about it. Ron Cook, his friend is the only person enthusiastic about his idea. For those who don't know Ron Cook, Ron Cook is the person who produced the first commercial DNA synthesis machine. Ron suggests Carey to resign from his work and patent the process for himself and get rich. By rich, he meant millions of dollars. But Carey never took Ron's advice which Carey regrets later. Carey shared his greatest masterpiece to Cetus and Cetus patented the process. Carey was happy working for the company. He hoped that the company will award him handsomely if PCR turns out to be successful commercially. He worked for months on the idea and the first successful experiment happened on December 16th, on his daughter Cynthia's birthday. Later on, Cetus Corp. awarded him a $10,000 bonus for his invention, while the company sold the patent to another company for $300 million. He felt he was unfairly treated. At this point he regrets not taking Ron's advice. But he was too late. To make it even worse, his PCR paper was rejected by both nature and science. Science says it is inappropriate for their readers. However, there was one man, a Nobel laureate who was interested in his work. James Watson. Watson becomes aware of his work and its potentials. So, Carey was invited to the 1986 Cold Spring Harbor Symposium. Here, Carey presents his invention and become the first official announcement of PCR to the scientific community. He submitted his paper for an official journal publication to the journal, Methods in Enzymology. It was accepted and published. Three years later, TAC polymerase used in PCR was proclaimed as the molecule of the year. In 1993, he was awarded Nobel Prize in Chemistry for his invention of PCR. The Nobel Committee comments, Carey Mullis invented the process as polymerase chain reaction, in which a small amount of DNA can be copied in large quantities over a short period. PCR has been a major importance in both medical research and forensic science. If you like the video, please hit the like button and subscribe.